Maguntacook Lake in Maine is really pretty, Jeff. Yeah, it is. So we just parked by Barrett's Cove Public Beach in Camden, just a few miles up Route 1 from Rockport. And the hiking trails here are pretty easy. So we're hiking up the trail to the cliff that overlooks the lake? Yep, that's the plan. Well, it's a great day for a hike. Mm -hmm. As we get higher, the views of the lake get better and better. We're heading for that white cross up there right at the top at the edge of the cliff. Yep, I see it. Uh, Usually when we see a cross place somewhere unique, it means someone died there. Is that the case here? Yeah, in this case it is. They call this place Maiden's Cliff. And the cross marks the spot where a young woman met her doom. They say her ghost still haunts these cliffs. Hello, I'm Jeff Belanger. And I'm Ray Ozier. Welcome to episode 288 of the New England Legends podcast. Thanks for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. Whether it's ghosts or monsters, UFOs, roadside oddities, or weird history, we're chasing it. And we can't do it without you. So please subscribe to our podcast right now. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts and contact us anytime through our website to tell us about your own strange local legends. Now, before we go searching for the ghost of Maiden's Cliff in Camden Hills, Maine, we want to take just a minute to tell you about our sponsor, New Audio Herbals. So, Ray, winter dry skin is extra brutal on me this year. Yeah, that happens to me, too. When the weather is cold, we turn up the heat in our homes. The heat dries out our rooms and our skin. We have to take extra special care in the winter. Which is why I'm reaching for Rainfall Body Oil by Nuati Herbals. Use it after the shower or bath. And yes, it's for men, too. And it doesn't smell flowery. Rainfall Body Oil has orange peel and ginger, along with essential oils and an extra virgin olive oil and corn oil base. Nuati also adds emulsifiers to help the oils and water mix so your skin feels soft and moist and not greasy. And that's the key, too. I mean, some lotions make you so slippery. Mm. Like all of Nuati Herbal's products, Rainfall Body Oil makes a difference in my own self-care regimen. Now, you've tried some of the many Nuati Herbals teas. Be sure to try some of their balms, oils, soaps, and other products as well. Let Nuati Herbals help support your healthy lifestyle. Check out the Nuati Herbals website to see their great products, and you will get 20% off your order when you use the promo code LEGENDS20 at checkout. Visit NuatiHerbals.com. That's N-U-W-A-T-I Herbals with an S dot com. Okay, Jeff, I see the White Cross. Yep. I mean, you can't miss it. Right. It's at least 20 feet tall and attached to a small cement foundation. There's some guide wire securing it to the ground. I can imagine it can get windy up here, so the wires keep it from uh, blowing over. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Right. The hike up here from the bottom took us about 30 minutes from the parking area. Not a bad hike at all. Mm-hmm. So Maguntacook Lake sits at the base of Maguntacook Mountain, and the top of the cliff is about 800 feet above the lake. There's no question a fall from the top would be... It would be very bad. Yeah, and in our experience, bad often leaves a mark for decades or even centuries after. Haunting. Now, locals will tell you that they sometimes see a young woman walking around up here. Even more terrible, they'll see a young woman wandering near the top, and then she disappears over the edge. I can't imagine seeing someone go over the side. That would be horrifying. Now, in some versions of the story, they say the woman jumped to her death because she was a bride left at the altar by a man who ran off just before the wedding, and she just couldn't take the embarrassment. A different version is that the bride jumped because she was being forced to marry a man she didn't love. And other versions say she was unlucky at love. The man she loved didn't love her back. So she jumped to her death off a cliff of what was then known as Lover's Leap. Now, to find out what happened, let's head back to 1864. It's May of 1864. The United States has been embroiled in a civil war for just over three years now. Here in Maine, we're a long way from the front lines, but you can still feel the tension. Plus, plenty of Mainers are down south fighting for the Union Army. So even if you can't hear the cannon fire up here, there's plenty of concern. It's Saturday, May 7th, and spring is springing. It's a great day to be by the water on Lake Maguntacook, or just go for a walk. And we're not the only ones out here taking a stroll by the water. No, I can see a few others in the distance. So the most obvious feature around the lake is this giant cliff on the eastern side. Some locals call it Lover's Leap. And of course, there's many Lover's Leaps all over the place. There are. I think almost any cliff where you can easily walk to the top gets that nickname at some point. The cliff is pretty accessible, too. There's various trails that will take you to the top in a short amount of time. It's a great place for a hike. It's about two in the afternoon. It's a lovely, breezy day. It's the kind of early spring day that offers a glimpse of those warm summer days coming. Whoa, what was that? Oh, 
Hey, look up at the cliff. Yeah, I see some people looking over the side. Looks like someone is trying to climb down the rocky face. Oh, oh I think someone went over the side. Oh, something just feels wrong. And from this distance, it's so hard to tell what happened, but yeah, I think something bad went down. By nightfall, a small group of people arrive on the cliff face to carry someone off the mountain. I can only imagine the worst. More days pass and word starts to spread that a young woman fell off the cliff and died. People can only imagine what happened, whether she ended her own life or if it was something more sinister. The victim of the fall was Eleonora French. It would take some time before we heard what happened from someone who actually witnessed the event. So the rumor mill's hard at work. The story spreads. But Eleanor's older sister, Antilla, she was there. My father's name was Zadok French, and I was the eldest of the twelve children. We lived at what is now Lincolnville Beach. That day, myself and the school teacher, Miss Hartshorn, were getting ready to drive to Lincolnville Center to see some friends when my little sister, Eleonora, coaxed our mother into letting her accompany me and Miss Hartshorn. We had dinner in town, and after dinner, a young man, Randall Young, invited us to go on the mountain, and the four of us climbed McGuntacook from the Lincolnville side. We did not realize that we were over the boldest cliff on the range until Mr. Young told us so, and he said he would find a big rock and roll it down over. While he was looking for a rock, Miss Hartshorn and I were sitting down, and little Eleonora was rambling about... I remember exactly how she looked. Her hat had blown off and with it the net. And when I last saw her, she was sitting on a rock near the edge of the cliff, putting on her net. I turned to speak to Miss Hartshorn. I heard a scream. I looked where Eleonora had been sitting and she was gone. We were dazed for a moment and then ran to the edge of the cliff, but could not get near enough to look over. Mr. Young climbed down the face of the cliff to where Eleonora had landed. Nearly three hundred feet, they say, from where she fell. She was still alive, and not a bone was broken, but she was injured internally, and died at twelve-thirty that night. I don't know how my sister came to fall. I shall always think that a puff of wind took her hat, and she fell over in going after it. Eleonora was twelve years old when she died, and that brings us back to today. It was just a few years later that a a wealthy local man named Joseph B. Steams was so moved by the story that he erected a white cross on top of the cliff. And it was soon after that that people started calling this place Maiden's Cliff. The white cross put up by Mr. Steams could only take so many main winters before it began to fall apart, but someone would always replace the cross. In 1947, another more substantial cross was put up in its place, and that one lasted until 1980, when a new, much bigger cross weighing 600 pounds was put up. This one was 24 feet tall and 12 feet wide. In 1986, two men named Roy Brown and Sam Dyer carried a donated monument up here and installed it next to the cross. Go ahead and give it a read, Ray. Okay, it says, Eleanor French, on May 7th, 1864, this 12-year-old farmer's daughter fell to her death from this cliff. According to legend, she was here as a member of a main party and fell trying to catch her wind-blown hat. This cross erected in her memory. So does that settle it? Was she diving for her hat? Oh, good question. So just to clarify, a Maying party is where people get together to gather flowers, sing, and dance to celebrate May Day, which is the start of the summer season. Now, typically, that's May 1st. And Eleanor's sister made no mention of going Maine in the article, so we can't really verify that part. But the breeze blowing the young girl's hat off, I mean, that's probably what happened. But our best witness, Antilla, didn't say for sure. That was her assumption. And by the way, we found the sister's account in the July 14th, 1915 Lewiston Sun Journal. And the story was about how they were about to open up the McGuntacook Turnpike to automobile traffic, and the road passed right under the famous cliff where Eleanor died. Though the cliff is about 800 feet tall, it's not a sheer face. Uh, They suspect Eleanor fell about 100 feet to a step in the rock and then fell another 200 feet below that. They say she didn't break a bone, but obviously she suffered some horrific internal injuries. Now today the cliff is called Maiden's Cliff, but the memories of Lover's Leap don't fade easily. 
Now that mixed with the story of the death and then the white cross allowed people to run with whatever version of the story they heard. And today, people claim to see young Eleanor's ghost reenacting her final fall. Or they claim to see a young girl walking by the top of the cliff and suddenly she disappears. The cross and the ghost both serve as a warning to all who see it. Take caution, someone has died here before. And that brings us to After the Legend, where we take a deeper dive into this week's story, sometimes veer off course. After the Legend is brought to you by our Patreon patrons. Our patrons kick in just three bucks per month. That's like buying me and Ray like a bag of chips (laughs) that we'll have to split. Mm. And for that, you get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. Just head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. Um, So, hey, there were actually two newspaper articles where Eleanor's sister Antilla retold her story. Uh, We mentioned the one from July 14th, 1915, but there was also one from August 6th, 1924, the Ellsworth American. Um, Nine years later. Nine years. So what happened is like something would happen at the lake. That story would come up. Uh, They would find Antilla and quote her again. And so though she used different words, I mean, the gist was pretty much identical. Just that, you know. The main party. Well, no, not the main party. Oh, that was the initial idea. That's what the plaque says. So she's against that, yeah. Well, she didn't confirm her tonight. Well, she didn't confirm it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But she would. I think she would. We were up there for a main party. It, it seems pretty cut and dry if that's what you were doing. Right. And so um, clearly when you read the, the account of just how terrible it was, uh, it haunted Eleanor's sister pretty much the rest of her days. And Antilla was 18 at the time and she died in 1930. So that's uh, sad. Yeah, it is sad. And, and 12 too. Yeah. I mean, awful. But I was thinking about this. You've driven down a road, especially a highway. Yeah. And you see a cross yeah. on the side of the road. Especially late at night. Oh, you know exactly what happened. Sure. Someone died right there yeah. on that spot doing exactly what you're doing right now. <laughs> right. Driving, yeah. right? Like you're, you're driving, it's late, you're tired, you had a gig tonight, you know? Um, it wakes you up, it for wake, sure. Doesn't it? Yeah. Right? So at the top of this mountain, I'm not looking over the edge. I'm not going close to the edge knowing that somebody did fall. The, the cross warns you. Yeah. Like someone, like you, if you knew nothing in the world, if we just popped you there right now and you see this cross... Uh, on the top of the, the cliff. Now you could say like, okay, maybe some religious person wanted yeah. to broad, you know, put up that they're a Christian and here's a cross. Sure. That, that could be it. But most of the time when we see a cross placed, it means someone died there. Yeah. And yes, it is a sobering reminder to, well, you're here where someone died. What are you doing? Exactly what they were doing. You're hiking on top of the cliff, right? You're driving down the highway. Yep. Uh, be careful. You experienced this going up uh, the mountain. Um, oh, sure. Weren't there, were there crosses or just the, the bodies? So, no, no. So when I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, the, uh, people would place plaques. Plaques. Okay. That um, were just stones they carried up there that just said, you know, uh, remembering so-and-so who died here on yeah. this day. Um, I remember the first one I saw was at like 11,000 feet on Kilimanjaro. And it said, uh, and I'm just like, we're not that high up. Like altitude shouldn't kill you at this, you know, this height. But uh, and then I learned it was a lightning strike, Oh, geez. which is something I didn't even consider. You know, but like, you were looking at the skies after that, weren't you? Right, and I'm covered in metal. Yeah. Right? I've got metal hiking poles. Oh I've got God. metal clips and spikes. carabiners and spikes and all yeah. kinds. There's um, metal cameras and I'm covered in metal. <laughs> I never would have thought of that. I didn't Good think thing that plaque was there. And, and I was like, well, what do I do if, if lightning starts to strike around here? Which, by the way, is, is higher than typically than uh, electrical storms, but not impossible. Yeah. And um, they said, well, you just drop your bag and you just get in a fetal position behind a rock. I'm <laughs> okay. It, yeah. Oh, good. Well, there's a plan. So we have a plan now. <laughs> okay. That's all I need is a plan. But you would see those clouds coming, right? You would, yeah, you would yeah. think. But like, you know, we would be there and like this dark cloud would just waft by. And I'm, you would just fall down and get in a fetal position. Right. And- right. No, yeah, I was, uh, but it, it occurred to you, you know, it definitely occurred to you. And that's why we have plaques and crosses. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, Lover's Leaps, we've done uh, a le- we did one not that long ago. It was actually episode 263. Yeah. I had to look it up. And that was the uh, Purgatory Chasms Lover's Leap in Middletown, Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. That's right. I do remember that one. That one was a cool story because it was a little bit different. Yeah. It was a twist on the Lover's Leap. Usually, yeah. on the Lover's Leap, someone dies. Yeah. This one, someone got their freedom, <laughs> which is a fun story. Go listen to well, it. Yeah. The gist is she just kept saying no, 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 no. Or he yeah. kept, which one She made it? him jump through hoop after hoop after That's hoop. That's right. So and that he, was she the kept literal saying, no, 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 no. And then it was also, no, just jump over. He's like, just eh, screw you. Jump that, jump this, this gap here in the rocks. Uh, and if you live, uh, and he was just like, all right, I'm going to do it. 
and then turned around and was like, yeah, no, I'm done with you. Uh, Fantastic. I love that he did it. He could have walked in the yeah. other direction and said, I'm not doing this and I'm yeah. done with you. He did it and then said, yeah, I'm done. Ta-da, take a bow and <laughs> goodbye. You know, and she's like, oh, he got away. Yeah. He got away. You should listen to it even though we told you exactly we what happened. We ruined the story. We <laughs> spoiled it to no end. But it's a really fun one because it's a nice twist on the idea of a lover's leap. And you can still go see it today. You can still go see this cross today. It's still there. It's still well maintained. Sounds um, like they will continue to maintain it too because it's been maintained over the years right and it was knocked over by vandals at some point this was decades ago um but it's substantial i mean you know it's in cement and there's that that nice plaque now right next to it uh there's the guide wires that hold it up and and keep it in place on on windy days because it's you know exposed to all the wind and elements but it's been maintained for you know gosh probably 130 years give or take at this point 140 years even uh, and and uh, there must have, I mean, that could be the sixth or seventh cross at this point. Right. Um, because in the beginning, it was just a, a white wooden thing and it weathered and disintegrated and yeah. they'd put another one up. Um, but yeah, no, that it's, it's um, and then you wonder, would we still talk about this story if the cross was never put there? No, it sounds like the cross is the story. It's huge. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you start right. with that and then you learn, oh, there was a child involved and there was, a, she fell and all that you kind of go backwards from there but the cross is what draws you in yeah 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 no i i I get it and Um, if you think about it like on the side of the road there's a story behind every one of those crosses too not just somebody crashed there is a story behind that who were they with what were they doing that day right um so you work backwards from the memorial i think and what's interesting too is that the person who first placed it there uh mr steams uh was a wealthy guy not as far as I know, not connected to the victim, just was touched by the story and said, we should put some sort of memorial there and had the cross placed. That's so nice. typically on the side of the road, that's family or close friends that do it. You know, like I, I there was one that just broke my heart because uh, it was sort of fresh mm. and this was on a back road, not, not far from here. And I mean, there was flowers and, and high school, it was a high school kid, uh, you know, high school pictures like, like um, laminated onto the cross and the, yeah. and the sign. And then I was thinking of this too, like it's, it's in a, neighborhood right like the girl like hit a tree and was probably just going too fast or whatever and imagine you live in those houses and you have to pass that memorial every day of course you want to be respectful and all that other stuff but you also like oh don't want to be depressed every day every day you drive by you're like oh my gosh this poor girl you yeah know? i mean how many times can you say that um so yeah no it's it's always very sobering and i think that's why we tell these stories they're cautionary tales they're you know, just let the hat blow off the cliff, girl. It's okay. You know, don't chase it. <laughs> let it go. Yeah, just no hat is worth it. Hats can be replaced. Um, could they even weigh back then, or were they hard to get? <laughs> yeah, maybe they could do it. Eighteen sixty four. Hats were huge back then, weren't they? Everybody and wore not a in hat. size, but just everyone had everyone. A hat. Everyone had hat to have stores a hat. on every corner, just like Dunkin' Donuts now. Yeah, maybe they're just tragic. Please subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts and share what we do with a friend or two. Post your favorite episodes on your social media. That's how we grow. So many of our story leads come from you. We would like to thank Lorna Nagara for lending her voice acting talent this week. Thank you to our sponsor, New Audio Herbals. Thank you to our Patreon patrons and our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bazaar is closer than you think. <laughs> <laughs>